From the American Revolution of the 18th century to the civil rights movement of the 20th, the acting career of Leslie Odom Jr. has followed quite an arc. Tracy Smith has a Sunday profile. Two Virginians and an immigrant walk into a room diametrically opposed foes. For those of you who still haven't seen it, this is Leslie Odom Jr. as Aaron Burr in the landmark musical Hamilton. Talk about a tough act to follow. If you found somebody new, there's nothing I can do. But, ask you to. but now he just might have found a way to top himself. Do me the service, break my fall. Oh, in the film One Night in Miami, Odom plays the legendary artist Sam Cooke, in this scene opposite his real life wife, Nicolette Robinson. The movie is centered around a fictional account of a meeting with Cook, Malcolm X, the NFL's Jim Brown, and Cassius Clay, later known as Muhammad Ali, on the night Ali won a title bout in Miami. Yes, Cassius Marcellus Clay is the new heavyweight champion of the world, boy. Yes, he is. And I don't even have yes, a scratch on my face. You'd think an actor would jump at the chance to join this ensemble, but after playing a real person on stage in Hamilton, Leslie needed some convincing. When you first heard about the role, did you want to do it? Absolutely not. No, to play Sam Cooke just felt like not wise. What changed your mind? My agent and my manager called me up and they said, we think you're making a mistake. And they'd never done anything like that before. And you listened? I listened. And it was pretty sound advice. Leslie Odom Jr. has been nominated for two Oscars here for acting Can you hear the bells ring? and for a song, Speak Now, that he wrote and performed. Impressive, sure, but you might say he's been rehearsing for this moment his entire life. Can you hear the angels sing low? Speak now. Growing up in Philadelphia, young Leslie's favorite pastime was singing along with a toy karaoke machine. And at an age when most kids are happy to be in the school play, he tried out for the hit musical Rent on Broadway. And he actually got the part. You shared with us this letter that they sent you about <laughs> take this train and show up at this stage. And I told them, I told them I didn't even want them to pay for my train ticket because I didn't, I didn't want them to like, I thought that would be too much money for them to spend on me. Like, no, my parents will drive me. I'm, I'm okay. You don't need to, you don't need to worry about me. I'm going to be there. Can you imagine? No. <laughs> Without you, the ground. And to this day, he can still feel the thrill of that first professional paycheck. I, I couldn't imagine that they were going to pay me to be in this show. And I remember the, the Broadway minimum at that time um, was $1,260 a week. I was 17 years old. You're going to give me $1,200 a week to be in this? I would pay you. You do know that I would, you do know that. At his parents' insistence, he chose college over Broadway. And after graduation from Carnegie Mellon, his career resumed. But by his late 20s, it had stalled. Let's fast forward okay. to 2011. It's right before your 30th birthday. Yeah. How is your career going? <sighs> Not great, you know. Um, I was tired of it. But with his family's encouragement, Odom kicked around the business for a couple more years until he had one of those lightning bolt moments that only happen in the movies or on a Broadway stage. There was a reading of this thing happening called the Hamilton Mixtape at Vassar, and I, I scored the very last folding chair in the very last row. Because you talked to your, you had a buddy who was an usher, and yeah. so you got the last seat. Yeah. And how much of it did you have to hear? before you knew. 20 seconds, max, 20 seconds. 
Do you remember what that 20 seconds was? How does a bastard, orphan, son of a whore and a Scotsman, dropped in the middle of a forgotten spot in the Caribbean, what am I hearing? What? Of course, back then, he had no way of knowing whether Hamilton would be a monster Broadway hit or whether the whole idea was too out there. So I didn't know if Hamilton would fall into that category, if people would actually dig it, you know? But you didn't care. I didn't care. You just had to do it. I had to. I had to. How does a bastard, orphan, son of a whore and a Scotsman dropped in the middle of a forgotten spot in the Caribbean by providence and poverty? Part of the beauty of Hamilton is that it means different things to different people. For Leslie Odom Jr., it meant a Tony Award, a Grammy, and a place in Broadway history. It's social currency now, how early you saw Hamilton. Not that just that you true. saw it. No, but were, were you one of the first, yeah. right? Did you see it? Did you see it early in previews at the public theater? Did you see it on Broadway? Because that really correlates to how much you paid for your ticket. <laughs> That's yeah. very true. This is a family neighborhood, right? It is a very family neighborhood. My wife grew up in this neighborhood, and uh, we're happy to continue that tradition, too. He now lives in the suburbs of Los Angeles with his wife, a young daughter, and a son due any minute now. And that means that the in-laws are close by for child care help? The in-laws are very close by and very helpful, yeah. That means more time to write and record music and work on his next move. You know, leaving Hamilton, people were asking me, what, what do you do next? What do you want to do? You know, people were saying, what's your dream role? The truth was, I just played it. Yeah, so then what do you do? <laughs> you know? <laughs> But I said, well, I want to do, I think I want to do, I knew I wanted to do. I want to do all the things that no one would let me dare do before Hamilton. I know where Elijah Muhammad's house is. It's the biggest one for miles around. Looks like the mayor's residence. Oh, yeah, I've been there for dinner. Oh, you've been there for dinner. So you see how he lives like a pharaoh. And now, with Never One Night in Miami, Leslie Odom Jr. is actually doing it. Let me hear you. You got it, you got it. The former Hamilton star is playing a role that gives him the chance to make history again. Yeah, that's the sound of the man working on the chain. The game. That's the sound of the man. You wonder if in a in a movie, like if, if given the right, if the pieces lined up, you know, maybe I could do something. And they gave us the chance to, to prove it to ourselves. Thank God, thank God. 